Hello, Tommy Ted here, and we're just doing just another quick casual one today. I don't think I'll get very far in this game because uh, it can get a little tricky at times. Um, but I want to—I've been wanting to do this video for a while now. Um, but other stuff has come up, personal life, and then the less uh, collection happened. I want to get that done, and that video is completely blown up no for my standards it's completely blown up for me which is surprising um a while back the dc fan dome thing or whatever they called it happened um their version of like a you no know, nintendo direct or something like that um which inspired me to have a look at this um this is superman the man of steel on the mega drive um, a game I had as a kid, young kid, um, and I thought I might just show it off, um, a little bit, because this game doesn't get talked about a lot. I don't think it's favoured that well, but, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not that bad of a game. This intro is awesome. I love that. So, this came out in 93, I want to say. So, basically, just a, a, it's a side-scrolling action game. Um, Now, when I first learnt about there being a 90s Superman game, even though there was more than one, was, uh, I was, what was I, six? And I, I knew about Superman 64 because I used to see... I never heard anything about it. Um, but I used to see it on the on the, um, on the the stands of, of, for a rental in the video store. Um, but then... I got given this about, yes, yeah, six... But it wasn't this version. It was a slightly different one. This is also on the Master System. So I got given... I think my grandmother gave it to me, actually. She found it in the video game store we always frequented. And, um... Yeah, she bought it for me. And also, the, at the same time, the Master System... The same day, yeah. The Master System version of Jungle Book. Which we liked a lot. Um, also on the same day... Um... We got the uh, Master Mega Converter for the Mega Drive. Um, but not the not not the power base converter, the Master Mega Converter made by HES. It was the very first HES thing I ever got, and I got uh, uh HES version of um RBI Baseball. Mm -hmm. 
So I originally had the Master System version of this. And I played it. The Master System version, I have a soft spot for because it was actually the very first Master System game that was outright mine. Um, because Jungle Book was technically for my sister, although it's mine now. Um, I, I took on all her games, she didn't care. Um, when she was a teenager, me young, me, my younger sister. Bloody three of them. Um, but I, not not too long after this, because funny enough, actually, uh, yeah, when I got the Master System version, I was living here. Because for those that don't know, I, I actually moved back into the original house I used to live in. I actually managed to come back to this house. Um, I moved from here to another spot. And then we weren't at that new house for very long, probably less than a year. And then we moved back to this same suburb, but in another house. This is after, this is after a ugly uh, divorce. Got some heat vision time now. I remember getting to this level as a kid and it was <laughs> really, really a, a, a nice touch. The only thing that this version has over the Master System version is that in the Master System version you can in you can just sort of jump off a ledge and just start flying. This one the flying levels are automatic. All right, boss time. Yes, the, so. Ah, oh, missed him. You got a super punch as well. You got you got special ones you can have. And I have no bloody life because I was too busy talking to you and dicking around. So the Mar the Mega Drive version I actually got uh, in the in the third house. There was a fourth one after that, and then I left there and managed. Got him to come back here. Now I gotta try and Whoa. Just give me a minute, I wanna concentrate because I don't wanna die here. It's the first boss for Christ's sakes. I don't know what the deal is with this guy, if he's meant to be a knockoff of Mixier's Pitalik or what, I don't know. Where's he going? Here he comes. Now that is a fair old effort. With no life, that is a fair damn effort. And that's level one done. Yeah, so, back to the story. Walked into that video game store that I always frequent, and um, this was sitting on the shelf. Um, it was when they were doing, it was, it was right in the midst of them doing second hand games and we just kept buying Mega Drive games second hand because we didn't, we didn't want to stop with the console, um, especially me because yeah, even, even as a kid, I, I knew it was the greatest console to ever come into my life and nothing else compared. He's bucketing outside, absolutely pouring with rain. 
I don't think we'll get much further than this level. Um, because I haven't played this in ages. Um, the, the DC fan just got me inspired just to play this. Um, and I felt like playing this because the one Mega Drive Superman game that everyone goes on about is Death and Return. I just want to do this for a change. I'm more than happy to play Death and Return of Superman. I mean, it's a Superman game and it's a beat-em-up. God damn. I'm more than happy to play that, even though it's rock hard and a pain in the ass. Ow. So in this one, we got to rescue the kids. So yeah, just on a whim, because it was cheap. I knew I had the Master System one, but I just wanted to see what the Mega Drive one was like when I saw it. Glad I did, because there is differences. Um, quite, quite a big lot of differences, actually. There we go. So, I... If you couldn't tell, if you're not a, a Superman fan, by the intro, I grew up a massive, massive, massive fan of Superman. This was, when I was a little kid, Lois and Clark was new. Um, it was, a, it was um, a show I actually used to watch with my mum. Along with um, repeats of Superboy, the TV series. Um, originally with John Hames Newton and then Gerard Christopher took over for the last three seasons. Ow. That's right, you had a dash in this too. Um, so right from very early age, um, that was from my grandfather. My grandfather was a massive Superman fan in the... Well, he was born in 43. So, um, I grew up with a VHS copy of the the first episode of Lois and Clark. I think that was kind of like a big, long telemovie from memory, I think. I've got it on DVD. Um, I remember that was like a big, long... So, we had that. We had a VHS copy of the Superman movie with Christopher Reeve. Um, and we also had a whole bunch of those sort of uh, public domain VHS tapes of old 1940s cartoons. A lot of them... Um, Warner Brothers and um, Paramount Fleischer cartoons. So Popeye, early, early Looney Tunes, um, Casper the Friendly Ghost, Mighty Mouse, and of course, the Fleischer Superman cartoons. And I grew up, one of the very first VHS tapes I ever had was one of the Fleischer Superman cartoons and it was the Mechanical Monsters and Billion Dollar Limited. That is probably my favourite version of Superman ever, of those Fleischer cartoons. They have been with me ever since I can remember. And I still remember that the VHS copy I had of those two shorts had a flaw in it. And it was in Mechanical Monsters, and it was, as they're zooming in on the entrance to the museum, uh, the picture and audio would cut out, and we'd just get this scrambled mess, only for about 10 seconds, and then the picture would come back fine. And it wouldn't 
didn't do it for the rest. It was just that little 10 second bit. Oh shit, I hit the wrong button. I still... Get out of there. I still remember that. I remember what the cover looked like and everything. I've actually been trying to see if I can find for years because the VHS tape is sadly gone. Um, I've been trying to find that VHS tape again. There's a couple still here from um, my childhood. One had a uh, volcano on it. That tape's still here. There's one of the very first one that I remember getting. That's that's still here. And then there's one that I remember getting one summer. I was at my grandparents' place and they had a um the, the area they lived in had a small local pool that was open free to the general public in summer. And weirdly enough, that pool is very much still there, very much still in demand. It was this tiny, tiny pool. It, was lar it wasn't big enough to be a pool, but it was large enough to be a spa. Basically, all you could do was just sit in it and be cool. That was about it. No way in hell could you do proper swimming in it. Weirdly enough, it was... It's part of a big place that's a lake. But you're not allowed to swim in a lake. All you, all you can do is swim in this dingy little pool. Weirdly enough, though, they actually have water slides there. they got two. Um... Place is set up weird. Um, I used to work there a bit because there's a um, there's a famous steam engine that runs through there, and I used to work for the steam engine, the, the company, uh, as a teenager. It was my second job, so I remember being there as a little kid, uh, going for a swim. It was a Friday Arvo. Must have been in grade two or something. Um, I'm pretty sure I was in grade two. Oh, he dashed at me. What the hell? Ow. Oh, you can't jump down. Alright, I'm gonna do... Oh, there's nothing there anyway. Okay, that was a waste. Anyway. So I got this VHS tape. And it was... Later shorts, I'm trying to remember. Uh, I know one of them was Jungle Drums. One of them was the 11th hour, where they were in Japan. And it was a war propaganda one because the later the later shorts became war propaganda. Jungle Drums was them battling Nazis. Um, oh, I'm not doing good in this level. I'm too busy talking about Fleischer Superman. Um. I'm trying to remember the other one. I can't remember its name. I remember they were working in a factory and the guy was shifty making weapons, torpedoes. And I remember he put Lois in one of the torpedoes. I can't remember its name. I used to know them all. But I love those shorts with... Uh, the original voice of Superman from the radio show, Bud Collier, and the original voice of Lois Lane, uh, Joan Alexander. And then, of course, so this is the weird thing. The first live-action Superman. A lot of people... Um, a lot of people think it's George Reeves from the television series. But it wasn't Miss Lane, and that's what counts. What time is it? 
It's not. Uh, the first Superman, live action Superman, was 1948. It was by Columbia Pictures. Funny enough, uh, Noel Neal was the first ever Lois Lane. Um, and she returned to the television series. Phyllis Coates was Lois in the first season. Um, ow. But Noel Neal was the first Lois Lane in 1948. And the first ever Superman was a guy by the name of Kirk Allen. Not, uh, in a movie serial. And they did two. Um, God, I'm not doing good in this level. Got him. So there was two. There was Superman and Adam Man versus Superman. And Adam Man, Adam Man versus Superman was fifty-one. They had the first appearance of uh, Luther. It was a guy, by, a guy by the name of Lyle Talbot, who also, in nineteen forty-nine, was the first ever Commissioner Gordon in in the second Batman movie serial, Batman and Robin. Robert. Robert Lowry was Batman in that. Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah, Kirk Allen was the first ever Superman. A lot of people think Adam West was the first Batman. Adam West was the third. First Batman was 1943. A guy by the name of Lewis Wilson. Nice work, you all right? Sure, sure. Some fight, wasn't it? Yeah, grab that gun. Go ahead. Come along, fella. You're going with us to the Bat's Cave. And then 1949 with uh, Robert Lowry. Anything out of those men we caught? We can try. At least they're out of circulation, thanks to you. Now you can see how important it is to guard every place where diamonds are kept. I certainly do. We can get a line on who's after the diamonds and where they're taking them. Um, the first Batman movie serial is very strange. Um... It's war propaganda, because it was 1943, right smack bang in World War II. There we go. More free kids. Nothing there. Oh, damn it. I was trying to avoid him. Camera's blinking odd things at me. Damn it. Is that game over? Yeah, that's game over. Oh, and look who's the villain. It's Brainiac. So anyway, yeah. Um, Lewis Wilson was the first Batman. And Kirk Allen was the first Superman. Interesting fact. Lewis Wilson has a son. Um, to a woman named Dana. Guy by, a guy by the name of Michael. Well, Lewis Wilson and Dana Wilson divorced. Dana went on to marry um, Cubby Broccoli, who was in charge of the James Bond films. And Michael is Michael G. Wilson, who still to this day... Um, is partly in charge of the James Bond films. Uh, he's Cubby Broccoli's stepson. There's an interesting fact for you. The one, of the, one of the guys that's fully in charge of James Bond ever since... I think he's been fully in charge since uh, 1995 with uh, Goldeneye. Because Cubby Broccoli was very sick during the making of that. Yeah. <laughs> the guy... The guy in charge... Of James Bond, or partly in charge, because I think, um... 
Yeah, because the, the daughter's involved too. Um, yeah. The, the, one, one half of In Charge of James Bond is the son of the original Batman. <laughs> I love that fact. <laughs> That's really cool. Do you know what? Playing this... It's put me in, in, in the mood for another game. But not Death and Return of Superman. And all this Batman talk. Mm, keep your eyes peeled. Anyway, that's been a quick look. Uh, sh <laughs> quick shitty look at this. I just wanted to shed some light on it. Because a lot of people don't shed a lot of light, uh, a lot of light on this game. And um, I don't mind it. When I can actually get into it. And not not get all factual and get distracted. I can get further. Um, but this isn't a full playthrough. This is just this is just a bit of bit of fun and just another chat with you guys. So that's about it. Anyways, oh look, let the demo run. Here you go. Yeah, I that's cool. I always love that. A side scrolling Superman shmup. Yeah. That's cool. I only I, I remember getting this level once, and it was. <laughs> and I thought, oh, what's going on here? Um, but I had another game to help me um, experience stuff like that. And you know, that's probably the one I'm going to show off next. So keep your eyes peeled. Anyways, this has been 26 minutes of me rambling on about Superman. Um, as you can tell, I'm a massive fan, besides the little animated intro I made and all the facts I've been telling you about. I love it. Um, wasn't wasn't big on the comics. I've never really been big on comics. I've always been a big fan of trade paperbacks. Um, I've lost count how many times I've read Death and Return of Superman and a lot of older, older trade paperbacks as well. Um, yeah, I've lost track. Um... Yeah, and other than that, I think we better leave it there. But yeah, hope hope you guys like the intro too, because that was made a while ago, actually. Um, keeping in line with what I did with the LS collection, um, those intros people seem to really like. I got I actually got quite a few DMs about those animated well, animated intros. Um, so far, I'll do another one for this. Um, because two of the LS collection ones were made ages ago. The two Game Gear ones were made on the spot real quick, in a panic. <laughs> um, but the Superman one was made a while back, so I want to use it. And, of course, I had to use the Fleischer theme. So, of course I had to. A, John Williams is copyright, and B, I just have a, a love for that Fleischer Superman theme. The original Superman theme. There you go. Would the radio show have one? I don't know if the radio... I think the radio show... Because I've got a vinyl record of the first four episodes of the radio show here somewhere. Funny enough, that actually... The radio show debuted on February 12th. Which is my birthday. That's a nice little... Little thing for me to love. I love that fact. Um, anyways, I'm rambling. I'm going to ramble about Superman all day. Um... Except the set the latest ones done by Zack Snyder. They're crap. God, they're crap. Anyways, um, yeah, um, I, I just wanted to show light on that that Fleischer theme as well. If you haven't seen the Fleischer um, shorts, please make an effort to because they are the they are the most amazing animated um, films, short films I've ever seen. Um, the artwork in them is just, oh, it's stunning. It's absolutely stunning. If you haven't seen the, the Fleischer Superman cartoons, please do. Um, because they're just bloody amazing. And I'm, I'm not going to recommend you one or two. You know what my favourites are, which are the Mechanical Monsters and Billion Dollar Limited, which is the second and third one. Watch the whole lot. They don't go, they're not huge. They're not like half an hour, an hour long. They're shorts. Um, watch the whole goddamn lot, because they're just so damn good. Really good. Um, 
No, they served as inspiration for Batman the Animated Series. So there you go. Everyone bloody loves that. Go watch some of the inspiration for that show. There you go. Anyways, I'm rambling. Maybe I'll talk more about Superman if you guys want me to do Death and Return of Superman. Or if you want me to show the Master System boot. Anyways, guys, thanks for having a squeeze at me with this. Thanks for letting me rant on about how much of a Superman nerd I am. And I'll see you later.